Good morning, and thank you for tuning into the Andrew Tate Show, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. Um, we've got a great show for you guys today. We'll be covering uh, the Super Bowl, uh, the NBA New Glass Court, a pay-what-you-can restaurant in Texas, and as always, make sure you stick around for later in the show when we'll be diving into the oddities of the day. Um, before we start, I would like to ask that you like and follow the show. Also, we get a number of questions from the viewers that come in during the show, so to ensure that your question gets read on the air, I ask that you use the tips and donation link with your question. The tips and donation link is streamelements.com slash gsmc sports network dot slash tip. This puts your question at the top of the list so that I can see it and it also just really helps the show. Good afternoon to you, Tate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, isn't it morning for you? <laughs> yes. Still dark outside morning for me. <laughs> that is crazy. I was just before we got on, I'm, I've been really busy. So I'm like, man, I have to eat lunch. And I was planning on eating lunch a little later in the day. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking about lunch. It's, it's 12, <laughs> it's 12 or eight right now. And I'm trying to push lunch back to two o'clock. That's, that's a late so, lunch. Well, actually, technically it's breakfast. What I'm trying to do, this is my new thing is trying to, to do more intermittent fasting. Mm. So I want to do 12 is my first meal. Uh, what is it? 12, five, and then eight o'clock mm -hmm. is my, my last meal. And so I'm trying to do 12, five and eight. And the reason why eight is because I'm the weirdo here in Portugal where everyone no one goes to dinner until yeah they eat late don't they yeah i mean super late me yeah. two two five and eight but mm -hmm. people don't go to dinner until eight nine ten o'clock and if you go to spain it is crazy people <laughs> you you're, you're like you're getting there and people are just showing up and it's like 10 o'clock at night 11 o'clock at night and they're just going out to dinner and then that's insane. Also, it's so different here because you'll see people uh, running around, little kids running around in the surf and you know town center, and you'll see this little kid that's four or five running around. And it's like midnight, and it's like, "Where's your parents at?" <laughs> they do not care. It's like, "Go ahead, little little Philippe, go have a good time." <laughs> that would never happen in America. You no. just have some little kids around midnight just running around on the streets. So just a little yeah. different. <laughs> I haven't even had breakfast yet. That's how <laughs> I haven't even eaten today yet. See, it's just if I view it's what it's 7 a.m. there, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, you got plenty of time. I would I would probably be waiting, too. So, well, I had yeah. a huge dinner last night, so I don't even know if I'm going to have breakfast <laughs> this morning. All right. Let me let me hear. Let me live vicariously through you. What did you have for dinner? Um, we had a uh, Berea tacos last night. They were so good. So good. Nice. <laughs> My wife and I, we have this challenge where uh, everyone in Europe, like they think Portuguese food is the best food in the world. And Portuguese food is really great. It's super fresh. You have a lot of like seafood. The seafood is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. But I like the American food. I think there's no no food in the world better tasting than American food. And it's it's not fresh. It's the chemicals that make it taste yeah. so good. Mm -hmm. Like the bacon. <laughs> you come here, you get bacon, and you're like, what is this stuff? You we need the nitrates, the the pesticides and everything else. That's like sprinkles. Sprinkles. <laughs> you know, you get ice cream, get the sprinkles on it, just so much, a little bit better. Uh -huh. That's, that's kind of that's where I look at. We have the highest obesity rate. In the world. <laughs> oh, girl, it is. I when I first got to move to Europe, I was like Andre the Giant. I was like this giant man here, and I'm not, you know I'm not that big of a guy. I was, but I'm still like mm. two thirty. Now I'm I'm down since living here I go from 230 to I'm I think I'm like 178 right now just okay. from just living a normal life. So it it is you do lose weight here. I need to move to Europe then. <laughs> <laughs> 
did like just move here for two years you'll be down to your fighting weight <laughs> all righty well all right let's dive into it um super bowl week is finally here Woo! <laughs> yes looking for this is going to be a great super bowl i agree um so the longest season in nfl history will commence uh sunday uh february 11th in las vegas when the san francisco 49ers and the kansas city chiefs face off in super bowl 58 the second time these teams have faced off in the big game in four years um chiefs quest to become the first team in 19 years to win back-to-back -back super bowls um, the Kansas City Chiefs are aiming to win back-to-back -back Super Bowl titles for the first time since the New England Patriots achieved uh, this in 2003 and 2004. This will be the Chiefs, the Chiefs' sixth Super Bowl appearance and fourth in the past five seasons. Um, and it's not surprising that the San Francisco 49ers, 49ers made it to the Super Bowl given their impression uh, impressive 12 to 5 record and overall great regular season they will this will mark san francisco's eighth appearance in the super bowl in franchise history yes. i i'm very excited for this game <laughs> see you're putting a smile on my face my face I, I love that you're that you're getting into this a lot more yeah okay this is going to be a great super bowl and I know a lot of people were thinking, looking at this year, and a lot of people thought that the Ravens could make it. And mm -hmm. including myself, a lot of people thought the Cowboys would make it. Mm -hmm. But this year, technically, it's kind of uneventful in an eventful way. I know that sounds crazy. <laughs> at the beginning of the year, if you'd have said Kansas, at the beginning of the year, you'd have been like, Kansas City just won their Super Bowl. Who's going to win? the 2023, 23, 4 AFC. Everyone, most people would have taken uh, the Chiefs. Mm -hmm. At the beginning of the year, if someone would have looked around and said, who's gonna come out of the NFC? Most people would have taken the 49ers. Unique pass this year looked like the, like the Kansas City Chiefs were gonna be very vulnerable. I, you know, maybe not make it. Their offense, their offense and their receivers were less than spectacular most of the year. A lot of people looked at Travis Kelsey as not the same, not the same player that he had aged a little bit. And but when you look around, and you look at Kansas City, and it's just like they're they're a very different team this year, but they're right back where they're supposed to be at which is, and this, I give all credit to Andy Reid. Andy Reid made an adjustment. They didn't have the receivers, but what they've done is, is throughout the season, they've been able to come on and find re quality receiving when needed. And the AFC Championship game, a lot of people are thinking about, okay, Kelsey's not the same. Guess what? In the, NFC, in the AFC Championship game, Kelsey did what Kelsey does best. He mm -hmm. rose to the occasion at a big game and got him into the Super Bowl. Uh, great coaching. The running game is uh, stellar. And their defense, at the beginning of the year, no one would have thought that the Kansas City Chiefs would be arguably the best defense in the NFL. Um, I wouldn't have thought that, but it is. It, in this particular case, it is. Now you look at the 49ers at the beginning of the year, the 49ers were a juggernaut. They were going through, they were taking care of business. Then midway through, they kind of had this little lax where, mm -hmm. where they had kind of dropped off and lost and dropped a few games. But Shanahan really got this team together. Uh, I kind of felt like in the playoffs, they kind of stumbled. I thought they were very vulnerable. I thought they they could have they could have lost to Green Bay. I thought they could have lost to Detroit. Both of those games, I thought they could have lost. But when needing a big play, when you know these teams jumped out to a big lead on these guys, and they all they just the 49ers just kept fighting back, fighting back. You cannot count the 49ers out, and that's the true definition of what a championship team can do. Whether if they jump out ahead on you, they can put you away. But if they get behind, they kind of stay under, they 
you know, they don't fold under pressure, kind of like my Cowboys did. Uh, they stayed under control and they battled back, especially against that, like that Detroit Lions game. They really battled back. So now you're looking at this and you're saying, who's the team that's going to win this or how they're going to win it? And Faith, I'm going to go to you first. I want, I want you to give me your breakdown on who's going to win it and why. <laughs> Why? I want to know. I want to know why too. <laughs> so, I, if you say, I and if you say if you say the 49ers' own run game, I'm just gonna put my headphones down and just walk out. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, I feel like the Chiefs are going to win. Um, just how they played in the playoff games. Uh, I know you said that the Chiefs. This is kind of like their wonky season. But I mean, it kind of was there. It wasn't, they didn't play as dominant as the Chiefs yeah. traditionally have played. But I mean, for a wonky season, they're still doing pretty darn well, in my opinion. Um, the and, Chiefs do chief things. Yeah. <laughs> and honestly, just looking at the past couple of games with the 49ers and how they've just kind of been like sliding off and um, allowing, you know, the other teams to rack up points and then at the the end of the game they're struggling to pull in points so that they can win the game um especially watching um the the lions then play the lions um i i don't know i'm not really impressed with the 49ers plus i tell I, you what go ahead, go ahead. keep little, on keep on you're doing good here <laughs> i'm also just you know i'm a little petty too because i wanted the lions <laughs> to win so um, that's also part of the reason why I'm pulling for the Chiefs, just because I'm upset that the 49ers beat the Lions. But overall, I do feel like the Chiefs are going to pull another Super Bowl win. All right. A lot of things you said makes absolute sense. And when you look at the 49ers, the 49ers have allowed teams in the playoffs to really come out and jump off to a big lead. And I mean, that 17 point lead that the Detroit Lions had, uh, you do that with the four, with Kansas City, mm -hmm. it's over. Mm -hmm. You're not coming back. You go down 17 uh, to, to Kansas City, it will not happen this time. That's the reason why I, l I look at a couple of things, how the 49ers have kind of got off to a slow start how although Brock Purdy is a great story, Mr. Irrelevant, uh, he has done fantastic. I know by watching the 49ers, you can rattle him. And when you look at that Kansas City defense and the fact that how uh, that defense can really put a lot of pressure on you, cause it can shake up a quarterback, make them make mistakes, if they're putting pressure on Brock Purdy and Brock Purdy makes a couple of mistakes, that's all the 49ers need. The, I mean, not 40, the Kansas City Chiefs mm -hmm. need. They have a solid defense that will not give up a massive lead. Mm -hmm. uh, second of all, if you give Patrick Mahomes the lead, they have a solid running game. Uh, they have Patrick Mahomes arguably maybe the greatest to ever do it. I know Tom Brady has a lot to say to that. I know uh, Peyton Manning, many others have, you know, something to say about that. But right now in this time period of what he has done, he's done it better than anyone else. If you give Patrick Mahomes a lead or you come in here and you come in here flat, the Kansas City Chiefs will make you pay for it. Yeah. I, I actually have this. This is going to be a great game. But I still have uh, Kansas City winning. I'm going to say more like a 27-21 win. It's going to be kind of a game like that. I don't look at it as a massive, you know, it's not, I don't see it to being like this offensive explosion. I look at it as two teams that have very stellar defenses, it's going to come down to what team makes the mistake, and I think it will be the 49ers. I have uh, Kansas City winning.
So that's how I kind of have it broken down. Yeah, by. the the whole like picking the score thing right now, it's still a toss up for me just because like um because of how uh the Chiefs defense is and how they played with the Ravens because this that score I thought was going to be a lot higher than what it was and it wasn't. Um, and then, you know, the score between the 49ers and the Lions and how the 49ers allowed the Lions to get this head start and then they came back towards the end of the third quarter and the the um, score was, like, very, very close. So I can't really figure out yet whether or not, like, it's going to be a blowout game or if it's going to be, like, super close together. I'm leaning towards, like, 27 24 i think okay oh right you're now. talking about a much closer game yeah all right i'm gonna give you my my surprise pick of the of the game okay my my stone cold lead pipe lock <laughs> that nobody else will predict okay you ready for this yeah you're looking at me right you get you 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 got your eyes on me right i'm looking usher He's going to light up halftime. Mm -hmm. He's going to do amazing. Kelsey, I mean, uh, Usher, Taylor Swift will do one song. I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> Kel uh, I mean, uh, Ta I mean, sorry. No, I mean, uh, Usher and Taylor Swift will do a song. I don't think one so. One song at halftime. I don't think so, because I don't think they even ever collabed. Wrong. I just saw this, which shocked me. Oh, did they? Uh, there's a I... concert, and Usher came. I don't know if it was her concert. Yeah, it was an Usher concert, and Taylor Swift came out and started singing with him. I just saw this a couple of days ago, and that's what made me start thinking. I'm like, they have done a song at a concert live before. Oh. And that's where, yeah, see? I, I didn't know this either until I saw this. And now I'm like, it's possible. No one's expecting this. I think uh, I could totally see this being done because- well, she turned down mm -hmm. the Super Bowl though. They asked her to perform and she said no, so. Well, I can understand why she turned down the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl is a big deal, but the way I understand this, don't quote me on this. This is going off of memory. You do not get paid to do the Super Bowl at all. Mm. Plus, you, matter of fact, you have to pay the NFL. So they get a portion of your of your of your sales over the next like few months after you do the Super Bowl. So the NFL makes money off the athlete because they're saying you get so much for being on the Super Bowl. It's such a big marketing thing for you and your career that we're not gonna pay you and we get a portion of your income for the next six to 12 months. That's that's why she, uh, she turned it down. Yeah, and how much she's making with her heiress tour. Right now. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> but Usher is the one that agreed to these terms. If she just comes in as a one song collab, no harm, no foul. She still gets to do it. And that would be enormous. Well, what do you think about that? Do you think that's crazy? Because I'm calling it. I don't think it's crazy, but I don't think it'll happen. Uh, Taylor Swift seems to be in her, her little sit down and watch the football game era. So I don't think she's going to want to do anything with performing. <laughs> Everyone's going to be like, she can't make it from Japan. It's so far. She's not going to be able to make it. She's she's in Japan. She's in Asia. And they're going to be the, the, the Taylor Swift watch. Is she going to make it? Is she not going to make it? Mm -hmm. And then... She's gonna be, Usher's gonna be singing next to you, you know, popping out of the stage is Taylor Swift. <laughs> starting to sing with Usher. That's what I'm calling. <laughs> well, Tate, <laughs> I would say don't get your your hopes uh, too high. <laughs> I'm just calling you, this is my dark horse bet of the, of the Super Bowl right there. I'm, I'm not trying, telling. <laughs> I'm trying to debate whether I wanna watch um, the Usher halftime or watch the Nickelodeon halftime. <laughs> 
please. I have a big SpongeBob. <laughs> Because I loved Spongebob as a kid. And so, you know, I'm trying to d decide whether or not I want to watch the, the Super Bowl. That's program I want for you kids. to go sit in that corner over by that speaker <laughs> and think about your word. <laughs> it's a toss up. We are not. I, I OK, I don't understand the excitement over Mr. Square Pants and watching him be at the because Super Bowl. Because you didn't grow up watching him. I grew up watching him. <laughs> I have watched SpongeBob. He he kind of annoys me more than anything. Mm. I'm not really a SpongeBob. I'm a big SpongeBob uh, fan. <laughs> I don't even care if I get hate mail on that one. I'm just not a big. <laughs> he says as he's wearing a yellow shirt today. Oh, <laughs> as I wear a SpongeBob colored shirt. I'm going to talk smack about Spongebob. I, you know, I, I've seen the error of my ways. I apologize, yeah. Mr. Spongebob. <laughs> Gosh. All oh. right. Well, I guess, guys, keep a lookout because Tate thinks Taylor Swift is going to perform at the Super Bowl. So I guess keep a lookout for that. Um, but Watch, you're going to be you're going to be you're going to be screaming at the top of your lung. Tate said that. And she's coming out singing. You're going to be so shocked. Watch. Oh, we'll see. Um, but guys, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to be talking about um, the new glass court that the NBA is unveiling. <laughs> 